الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم بتقوى الله وطاعته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم هل من خالق غير الله يرزقكم من السماء والأرض لا إله إلا هو فأنا تؤفكون وقال الله تعالى لا إله إلا هو يحيي ويميت ربكم ورب آبائكم الأولين صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من أحد يشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله صدقا من قلبه إلا حرمه الله على النار صدق رسول الله ونطق حبيب الله May Allah's blessings and mercy be upon us We thank Allah We believe in Him We ask for His help We seek His forgiveness We seek refuge in Him from the evils of our actions. Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, despite being sent at different times and regions, all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Sayyidina Adam until Allah's final prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they were all tasked with conveying a single divine message to humanity that is to believe in Allah and His oneness at Tawheed. For the sake of establishing the principle of Tawheed in the minds and hearts of people to whom they were sent, without any exception, all prophets and messengers of Allah showed great patience and determination in doing their task and delivering this crucial message. As the Quran narrates in various places, the basic message of all messengers of Allah was worship and obey only one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, in Surah Hud, we are told that Nuh, Hud, Salih, and Shu'aib all conveyed the same common message to their people. O oh my people, worship Allah. There is no other God but Him. Luqman, who is reported to have been given wisdom, warned his beloved son as follows. يا بني لا تشرك بالله إن الشرك لظلم عظيم. Oh my dear son, don't commit shirk. It is a terrible wrong. 
In Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a clear instruction to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Ittabi'a ma uhiya ilayka min rabbik, la ilaha illa hu, wa a'rihu anil mushrikin. Follow what has been revealed to you from your Lord. There is no God but He. And turn away from those who associate partners with Allah. The notion of Tawheed is the first and foremost principle of our Islamic faith. Tawheed means to declare that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that He is the only divine being. In the footsteps of his predecessors, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also called his own people to believe in the only one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, arguably at the peak of the idol worshipping. Despite a strong resistance from the Quraysh chiefs, the Prophet والسلام, together with the few individuals who stood by his side from the very beginning of his mission, created in a society that believed in the oneness of Allah. Unfortunately, many Meccans turned a deaf ear to the call, especially early on. Although it is not worthy that they didn't deny the existence of Allah outright. Most Arab tribes believed in the greatness and the power of Allah and had accepted Him as the sole creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabut, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth and subjected the sun and the moon, they will certainly say, Allah, why then do they turn away from him? So, what was it that made them reject the message? and harbor enmity towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the early Muslims? The answer is found in the false conception of God. From past to present, while accepting Allah as the sole creator, the narrow mentality set limits to Allah's power and sovereignty. They failed to recognize Allah's absolute authority and the power over His creation. For them, Allah's relationship with this world and His creation was seen as a situation that completely contradicted His sublime power and transcendence. For this reason, they created intermediaries in the form of idols in order to present the worldly affairs to them in the first instance. In other words, the idol worshippers failed to realize that Allah alone directs and manages the life on this earth and establishes a permanent bond with His great creation. A common characteristic of people who oppose the notion of Tawheed is that they do not want any interference with their lifestyles from the outside and hence reject a superior power that can set limits on their freedoms. Instead, they tend to preserve the status quo focused on their individual benefit, power and interest. Moreover, For this very reason, they regard the divine message as a threat to their established habits. This essentially points to the ever-present struggle between the truth and falsehood, haq and battle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran that we must stand by the truth against falsehood. 
Therefore, Islam does not want a person to, to remain passive when it comes to the truth and falsehood, but rather urges each person to choose a side. Truth over falsehood, justice over oppression, good over evil, submission and servitude to the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, over denial and rebellion. Dear brothers and sisters, Tawheed is the key principle that distinguishes Islam from other religious traditions. Islam manifests itself with the doctrine of Tawheed, which expresses the purest and most reasonable conception of the divine. In this context, the ideal identity that Allah envisages for his servants has always been the same throughout the history that of submission to Allah, a proper Muslim identity. When Sayyidina Ya'qub asked his sons on his deathbed whom they would serve after him, they replied, نَعْبُدُ إِلَٰهَكَ وَإِلَٰهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ إِلَٰهًا وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ we will worship your God and the God of your fathers, Ibrahim, Ismail, and Ishaq, the one God, and to him we submit ourselves. The magicians who confronted Sayyidina Musa السلام, and after seeing the clear signs, believed and then insisted to submit to Allah alone and die as Muslims. Similarly, the disciples of Sayyidina Isa السلام, declared that they are Muslims. In this respect, the narratives about previous prophets and their people mentioned in the Quran stand as important references in the formation of a true Muslim identity. A person who has surrendered to Allah is the one who accepts Allah's sole supreme power and his absolute sovereignty in both the metaphysical and the physical realms. Therefore, Islam asks a believer to design his individual and social life in line with this belief and to shape his life according to it. The only source of reference that a Muslim should consider in his life is Allah's will, his orders and prohibitions. In other words, according to Islamic teaching, human beings are not left to themselves and attended. As revealed in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah is never unmindful of his creation. On the contrary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of his creation manages it, protects living creatures, feeds them, and so on and so forth. Part of our belief in Tawheed requires to know that humans were not created in vain without a clear objective and purpose. Dear brothers and sisters, Belief in Tawheed expresses a state of consciousness that accepts the existence unity, power, and sovereignty of Allah, and that his judgment and will are above everything else at every moment of life. A lifestyle that takes its reference from any metaphysical or worldly power or value other than Allah's is not accepted in Islam. As we know in ancient Rome, Greece, and Egypt, Kings were venerated as gods, and the order they established was considered divine by their people. In this context, Ibrahim's struggle for Tawheed is exemplary. The king of his time not only rejected Ibrahim's call to Tawheed, but he also claimed to give life and cause death. By this, 
The king put his own will against the will of God and challenged Allah's supreme authority and power by claiming the divine quality of giving life and causing death. Yet, he would subsequently go on to die a rather painful and miserable death. Another striking example of the self-proclaimed divinity are Pharaoh's words to his people. I am your most supreme Lord. The great scholar of Islam, Imam Ghazali, offers us a good perspective on the human desire to reach perfection and total freedom. Al-Ghazali states that in every human there is a desire for perfection, elevation and total liberation. According to Al-Ghazali, these qualities in their true form can be attained only by turning to Allah in repentance, by honest submission, and by living according to Allah's command. Indeed, claims of perfection and liberation other than these are nothing but misery and decline for the human being. In instances where the will and the command of Allah are not prevailing, the mentality of ignorance prevails. This unhealthy mentality puts the lower desires above everything else and pushes aside the moral values. It also expresses a mentality that is focused on oppression and corruption. In other words, it is a way of life whereby material elements and worldly pleasures are sanctified against the will and the power of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in the Quran, Have you not seen the one who took one's desires as a deity? Contrary to this fallacy, there is a Tawheed-centered lifestyle that liberates people from the servitude to their lower desires and ego. Dear brothers and sisters, a Muslim must always question his or her lifestyle and what it is that constitutes the central element in his or her life. He or she must always keep the consciousness of serving no other but Allah Almighty. A believer takes an Abrahamic stance in his life by saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. There is no place for despair in a Muslim's life. This is because the only way to fulfill our mission as Allah's Khalifas on this earth is by living a life centered on Tawheed. In this way, we are remaking the world we live in, ensuring that the will of Allah prevails. May Allah enable us all to live by Tawheed and accept us as true believers. May the peace, mercy, blessings and the forgiveness of Allah be upon us all. Amen. ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شان شرف صفيه فقال عز وجل من قائلا مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارضع للأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين اللهم أيد كلمة الحق والدين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم ثبت أقدامنا على الصراط المستقيم وأصلح ذات بين المؤمنين واكتب الصحة والسلامة والعافية على أمة محمد أجمعين اللهم ارحم أمة محمد رحمة عامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ نَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ